Well, we have arrived. Today we are out in Palm Springs for our very first time visiting Desert Memorial Park. We've obviously been to Palm Springs many times, but we've never been to this cemetery. And one of the greats, Old Blue Eyes, a man who did it his way, is buried here. So let's go visit Frank Sinatra. And today's vlog is a special Patreon sunglass vlog for Lisa Keen. I hope you are a Frank Sinatra fan, Lisa. Even though Frank Sinatra wasn't born here in Palm Springs, he was born in Hoboken. This is a man who found a home here in Palm Springs and even when he was in his dying last days at his house in Malibu, he would tell people, please take me home. Meaning out here to Palm Springs, so it's very appropriate this would be his final resting place. Right away you probably noticed this is a flat headstone cemetery. Frank Sinatra is one of the easier graves to find here. If you come in the Ramon Street entrance, it's pretty much right, right here where all these flowers are because even in death, Frank has his entourage. He has his family and his best friends buried next to him. Now here's Frank buried right next to his fourth wife, Barbara. And you can see that he certainly gets a lot of visitors and someone ever even left him a shot out here. When he was buried, he was buried with a bottle of Jack Daniels, some Tootsie Rolls, and ironically, a roll of dimes, or surprisingly, a roll of dimes. I'll tell you why he had the roll of dimes in just a little bit. Frank Sinatra is an incredibly intriguing guy because for as well known as he is for his beautiful singing voice and all of those famous songs, uh, he's as well known for his personal life and how I ever found out about Frank Sinatra being a kid was the movie License to Drive when they uh, when they borrow grandpa's car uh, for the date with Mercedes grandpa's hits are the Frank Sinatra tapes and so you have all those songs <laughs> are the soundtrack to License to Drive so starting down here at this end we have Frank's parents Anthony Martin Sinatra and Natalie Sinatra, also known as Dolly. Frank Sinatra's life was almost something that you would write for a movie. And, uh, and if you would have, he probably would have starred in it because he was well known for being a great singer, this great crooner, and even survived the rock and roll craze, surprisingly. Frank Sinatra was also an actor. He was many things. He was a producer, but he never planned on being a singer when he was a kid. He was, uh, some say, more on the privileged side. Even though he was a street kid from Hoboken, his parents um, had money. They worked really hard, and he was an only child, so he could kind of roam the streets freely without any penalty. Um, he would skip school. He would practice being a boxer and hang out in pool halls and eventually drop out of school and really have no plan for his life. He had a wonderful woman named Nancy that was his childhood sweetheart eventually. They would go out one night and see a crooner named Bing Crosby and they liked him so much that Frank was inspired to want to be a singer. He started singing in dive clubs and bars and eventually Harry James, the big band leader, saw him and immediately offered him a job. Frank was in the big time right away um, and he was a great singer for the big band and it didn't take very long after Harry James had signed him up about a year later before Tommy Dorsey came and stole him away. Now, he was with Tommy Dorsey for a little over a year, almost two years, and then Frank went solo because um, one of the rumors is that his um, godfather um, was connected with the crime families and helped get Frank Sinatra out of his deal. And once he was a solo artist, man, it was, the sky was the limit. He did this grand three-week engagement at the Paramount Theater, and he was a superstar. He married his wife Nancy, they had their first daughter named Nancy, and he was really, it looked like, taken off. He was even um, getting cast for movies 
mostly as a singer, you know, as, a, as the big band type guy. But then eventually he would, um, he would make it to be in real movies with real parts, dramatic parts where he was the star. See, even though you would think that Frank Sinatra had it all, having his childhood sweetheart, having a baby, even having another one on the way, it wasn't enough for him. And he fell in love with Ava Gardner and started having an affair with Ava Gardner, moved out of his house with his wife, and for almost five years would have this very, very public affair um, with Ava. And eventually um, his wife did divorce him and took a lot of his money. And that same year, he had um, he'd been performing so much and partying so much and not sleeping that his voice gave out. So not only had he um, given up a lot of his money to the divorce, but now he couldn't even sing to earn money and had this uh, Hollywood movie starlet girlfriend who would eventually become his wife. So he was so broke when he was with Ava Gardner when they originally got married. He had hooked up with her in 1946, but they didn't even get married until 51. And uh, when he went to buy presents for his kids for Christmas, she had to loan him the money. He was just, you know, he was that destitute, but he fought back. And they had a pretty tumultuous relationship because they both were, they were like two peas in a pod. They could match each other, smoke for smoke, drink for drink, um, party for party, and, and it just never really ended. And it tended to get violent. Um, eventually, that would end. Frank would throw himself um, into making movies, and that all started actually from um, when he was having his divorce. He was reading From Here to Eternity and really, really gravitated towards Maggio and fought for that part, and uh, that was really where he became well-respected. So he was doing, you know, Guys and Dolls, and he, he was well-known for all these movies, including The Manchurian Candidate, which he eventually, since he was the producer and the star of, he actually had pulled from all distribution because he thought that the, um, he had done it even though it was before John F. Kennedy's death. It dealt with the assassination of a, a candidate and he just thought that it was in bad taste and had it pulled for like decades. And he was even at one point friends of the Kennedys. He tried to um, help support them in their political bids but because he had had affiliations with organized crime and he was affiliated with Las Vegas, um, Bobby Kennedy basically told John to get away from him and um, and eventually Frank would go to Bobby Kennedy when Frank Sinatra Jr. would be kidnapped. He would go to Bobby Kennedy and ask for the FBI's help in getting Frank Sinatra Jr. back. So that's where the story with the dimes comes in. When Frank Sinatra Jr. was kidnapped, um, that was something that he always had to have on him were dimes to take these payphone calls and so he always kept a roll of dimes on him and um and that just became a habit so when he passed away they buried him with those dimes now um he was making movies and he was still making music but at some point he just became extremely disillusioned with making movies and became what a lot of people said was just a pain in the butt on set he would bully people around he was rude he would only do two takes of a scene instead of like the 20 you normally take. And he would just say, we got it, that's fine. And even when I knew Shelly Winters, she said that that was one of the people in her life that at the time she hated the most because she said, we made a movie together and we were going to do a scene and he was trying to call the shots and, and, uh, and I wasn't having it because I was a big star too. And she said, he, we went to do the scene and he said something about wanting to smash my pretty face. And I came back at him and she said, the, the, the set erupted, they had to be separated physically. Um, it, it, they both like quit the movie and they had to be brought back together to finish the movie and everything. And she said that was something that she um, had a grudge against him for a long time until um, his son was kidnapped. She said that was actually when they became friends again because she said, I had a daughter and I, 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 I could understand what he was going through even though a lot of the press at the time were saying that um, they thought that he had set it up, that it was like, it was for publicity or whatever. Um, she, she said she felt for him and sent him flowers and apologized for them not getting along in the past and they made amends. So as Frank got older and approached his 50s, the world was moving on and he was still making movies and met a 21 year old girl on set named Mia Farrow that he fell for. And she was kind of like a hippie at the time and he wasn't. 
but he fell madly in love with her head over heels and even told his daughter Nancy you know even if this fizzles out whatever time I get with her is totally worth it um, and that's basically what happened they were together for a while but their age difference was just so big and their interests were so different that it just didn't work and eventually he would meet Barbara who he would spend the rest of his life with and she would go on tour with him and everything when he would make his comeback because yes Frank Sinatra at one point decided maybe the world's had enough of old blue eyes and he decided to retire and he did that for a while and then eventually much like Elvis when it was time for him to come back he did a televised special to come back and then you know continued to perform pretty much until the end up until the last couple of years of his life where he just physically couldn't perform anymore but he always called Palm Springs home he had two houses out here um, I'm trying to get us in one of them I'm gonna take us by and show it to us but um, I've contacted the property about getting a tour of it and they um, they're waiting on some answers from the homeowner but there he is the grave of old blue eyes the stranger in the night Francis Albert Sinatra and they said one of the you know I said he lived a real storybook life he was somebody who um, in a weird way did the country a favor by being F4 for the the war he couldn't go fight because he had a punctured eardrum and he ended up becoming one of the primary people that would keep women's morale up they they through him could think of their men fighting overseas and still had love in their hearts and hopes of romance for when they return so very storied life now like I said he's basically buried with his whole entourage because he's got Barbara next to him and him and then there's Vincent Mazzola and then his mother and father but then down here was also one of his actually a lot of people say his very very best friend restaurateur and used to end up a lot on uh, TV shows it's kind of like a character Jilly Rizzo and you can see it says he was the best He was without question a very generous man and without him a lot of people wouldn't have had careers or maybe wouldn't have had the same career because one of his best friends was someone that he actually <laughs> Frank's mother Dolly had seen perform doing comedy in New York or maybe it was New Jersey and told Frank he had to go see him and when Frank went this performer insulted Frank from the stage and Frank loved it and they became lifelong friends. That man was Don Rickles. So now let's go ahead and head over to the first estate that Frank Sinatra had built out here called Twin Palms. So right here, is what is called Twin Palms. It's now a rental property that you can rent for events and weddings and you can even stay here. And I called them because I wanted to do a walking tour of this, but um, unfortunately it's already booked up for all the days that I would be out here. But um, they said that they're going to present it to the property owner and if they agree, then we'll be back out here and we'll get to do it. Now, it's called Twin Palms. You can see it says, the Sinatra residence, completed 1947. Architect E. Stuart Williams called Twin Palms for its landmark trees. The singer's modern view-oriented home uses strong horizontal and vertical forms, natural materials, and decorative trellis. Now, those are the Twin Palms right there. And where he came up with that name was that they said he was actually flying in a plane and there was not much more in this entire area than a landing strip. Now you can see that there are houses and a whole community built up around it, but at the time it was just desert. So he purchased two plots of land, one to build the house on and one to build the pool on. So it actually has two separate entrances and this is the pool entrance.
Now this is where he was living when he was with Ava Gardner and he was, he had left his wife. And um, we're gonna go over and take a look at the other entrance to this house, but this will crack you guys up if you watch my channel. As we leave Frank's property and I tell you that this all used to be desert land, do you see what's in front of us? Do you see who his neighbor eventually would have been? Yeah, Kenny, Robo Lights. Yeah, can you imagine Frank Sinatra and Kenny's family being neighbors? I can, I love the idea. So Frank eventually moved out of this house and got another house that he stayed at mostly, most of his time in Palm Springs. That's the house that he took Mia Farrow to. And it's also the house that he named after his character in From Here to Eternity, the Maggio house. Yep, there's Kenny's place. Now here we've made it to the other side. Lucky us, it looks like the gate's open. You can see inside. Wow, how beautiful is that? That's pretty cool. Frank's first Palm Springs house, there are the twin palms right there. Wow, it's pretty cool. I read online that they used to have a big tree right here in the center. And that the, uh, I believe there was one family that bought this from him and they stayed here for decades. And here you can see they pretty much have the same exact plaque right there in front. And this was used, um, the house itself, the exteriors were used for a Joan Crawford movie. So I hope you guys all enjoyed this vlog. Lisa Keen, I hope you enjoyed your sunglass vlog and hope if you're a Frank Sinatra fan, this gave you a little something to smile about today. See you all tomorrow. Have a great night. Say.